We have a class-based component for our counter. It's handling props. In this tutorial step, we're going to have it handle state as well. We're going to have a type definition for that state. We're going to see some of the cool things we can do with that. Our counter component needs to track state. We're going to add it in this step. So we're going to start with what else? A failing test. And actually, I need to get started in my uh, TDD layout. So I want app on the left. And, no, sorry, I want uh, counter on the left. And I want the counter test on the right. And our tests are passing. So I want to add a new test about the state. And I want my counter to start at 0, currently starting at 1. So by default, it should start at 0. So I'm going to write a new test. Uh, should start at 0. And the way tests work is an arrow function. This test is going to extract uh, get by roll from render of the counter, similar to what we have in the test above. And at the moment, we're not passing anything in. Uh, and I'm going to say the counter value equals get by roll of counter which is this. And then I expect the counter to equal, uh, no, to have text content equal to zero. I said text content because it's the DOM, everything's gonna be a string, clean everything up, save. Guess what happens? Test fails, which is good. Got a good starting point. Uh, we need to make this test pass because it doesn't yet, it doesn't currently have that in it. So I'm gonna go back over to my counter and I've got my props modeled with a type definition. I need my state to be modeled with a type definition. Instead of doing it inline down here in the generic, I'll go ahead and start doing it the right way. All right, export type counter state equals, and what's the state look like? It's gonna have a count and it's going to be a number. So pretty simple. How do we put this in? It's a uh, the component is a generic type. It can have zero, one, or two things. Uh, first thing is props. Second thing is going to be the counter state. So with that in place, I'm now modeling the type information. So from that perspective, the TypeScript compiler is happy. But now I got to get it uh, put into use in my component. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to model my state on the class as a property. And I'm going to say counter state has an initial value where count is zero. Oop, I need to say equals. So now that I've got that in place, I can come down to where the one is and I can say this.state, which is cool. I can go further than that because of type information. Because I did counter state above, it knows there's a count on the state. And I can expand that, do any reformatting, save, and see how my tests do. And my tests pass because the initial counter state is zero and I expected it to be zero. Now let's talk about a fun thing that we get from React plus TypeScript. If you've done React, if you've done stateful components, you know you can't say something like this.state.count equals 22 because you can't assign to the state supposed to be immutable. But you see the TypeScript compiler didn't do anything right there to yell at me and say I was making a mistake. How can I get type safety from stateful or from state that is read only? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this in TypeScript a little bit. I'm going to go back to my state up here. The first thing I'm going to do is extract the initial state to a standalone value as a const. So I'm going to say initial state equals that. And now for my type definition, what I'm going to do is use some features of TypeScript to say read only and type of and then initial state. And what I'm saying here is that this type definition 
Oh, no, I don't, don't want to say number. Duh, I want to have an actual number. Okay. What I'm saying here is this counter state, its type definition is going to not be assignable and it's going to have the shape of the initial state. So with this in place, I can get rid of this and instead associate that information with a read-only attribute of state that is of type counter state, which equals the initial state. So in this case, I'm doing the type definition, and here I'm setting up at runtime, instead of compile time, the initial state. And when I save, on my test pass, which I expected it to do, wasn't that substantive of a change, but if I try to do something like this, I get a TypeScript compiling error saying I attempted to assign to a read-only value. Bam! That's pretty cool. Got to admit, I like that. Next feature we'd like to add, we'd like it to be able to start at a different value than that initial value. Optionally, the consumer of the component, the parent, can say to the child component, in this one little case, I want you to start at 10. This is a little bit tricky because the way that this is being set up right now is happening before we have access to this. Up here, there is no this. We're at the class level. So we're gonna have to introduce a lifecycle method of component did mount. Like we always do, we're gonna start with a good test. And this one says that it should start at another value. And I'm going to pass into, as a prop, this is the parent that's saying, I want you to start at a different value such as 10. I'm already failing faster. The test hasn't run yet. I get a red squiggly because of TypeScript and the type information. So that's pretty cool. Now I need to go fix my type definition of props to say we can pass into the counter besides an optional label, optional with a question mark, I can also pass in an optional starting point. So I will say start question mark, colon, and this is a number. Reformat. And my red squiggly went away. The TypeScript compiler was happy. That's cool. That doesn't really help us at runtime to actually implement this. So if I were to save, then the test would run and the test would fail because I haven't implemented this yet. How do I need to implement it? As I mentioned, I have a lifecycle method. Oh, let's see, that failed because, that passed because that was supposed to be 10. I need a lifecycle method, component did mount, and you see I'm getting the autocomplete. Thank you, IDE, for helping me on that. And what I want to do is I want to model the case where maybe I got past the start as a prop, maybe I didn't. If I did get past the start, I want to use it as the initial state. And we know it's read only now, so I have to call set state to do the assignment of that state. So I'll start to detect, I'll start by detecting um, the props if I have a start value then I want to assign the state for the initial. So I'm gonna say this dot, I, I can't do this dot state dot count. I'll get the compiler error for that. So instead I want to do set state and do the normal react setting of state. Count equals this dot props dot state start. And with that in place, what this will do is at runtime, when I do have access to this dot props and this dot start, I, props dot start, I will assign a state, I'll do a save. This life cycle method is run once when the component mounts, and then after that, all of the calculation of the counter state happens on clicking. We've done all of this. I haven't wired this into the UI about the starting point or anything like that, so I need to make a couple of changes for that. I'll go back to app dot the parent component, nothing really needs to change here because it's an optional component. So what I will do is go to the test and decide, uh, I, want, I want to make sure that the counter value is present in the document 
and that it starts at zero. So I'm going to, let's say, get by roll because the counter component has the count on a span that has a roll. So I'm going to get by roll. And now here I will const of counter equals get by roll counter. And then expect counter to equal the starting value of zero. This is essentially what was in the counter test. Here, basically the same thing we had there. And when the tests run, I am now, let's see, I can see zero. And my mistake on this is not the two equal, it's to have text content, should have cut and pasted from that other test. The to be evaluated the entire node. All I wanted was the node's text value. Now my tests pass, I'm correctly wired back into the UI. We will take a look at what this looks like in the browser. So I'll go back to here and click on the link. And look, instead of starting at one, we're now starting at zero. We have a stateful counter component.